Today I want to talk about some of the lenses I use for my Panasonic G7. Let's first start off with some modern lenses. The lens filming me currently is the kit lens that comes with the G7. It's the 14 to 42 millimeter lens. Overall, it's a decent lens. It's very sharp, although it just doesn't let in a lot of light. But it's a great little lens just to have around, and it's very light, and it's image stabilized. This lens really is a beginner lens. You know, when you pick up the G7, this lens comes with it. But it's a great lens to learn different focal lengths. My next main lens that I use is the Canon 17mm to 55mm f2.8 lens. I got this with my Canon 7D and you know it worked great because I could use autofocus and control the aperture, got image stabilization, but once I just used this adapter right here which has no electronics whatsoever, I basically only have the focal length. I don't, I can't use autofocus or even control the aperture. But I mostly shoot at f2.8 on this lens anyway. It just kind of sucks that you lose out on the image stabilization. So we attach this to the camera because the camera is so light, it's usually a little front heavy, which has been kind of messing up with my tripods. The tilt will go down too quickly, and I don't have any way to adjust that. This lens is similar to a uh, Sigma 18 to 35 in terms of price and the focal length range. Only on that one, you don't have image stabilization but you do have an f1.8 aperture. So when I bought this with the 7D, I knew I wanted that image stabilization. I actually bought this used and got it cheaper than the price of it new. So this was a better option for me when I had the 7D. Now when it's on the G7, um, you kind of lose on some of those features that make it great. But overall, it's a quality lens. My last modern lens is the Canon 55-250 millimeter lens. I actually had this lens when I had the T3i before I sold it. Um, it's a great telephoto lens. I don't usually use telephoto lenses that much, but I just thought I'd keep on to this whenever I do need to shoot something like the moon or something. It has image stabilization, and it's not the sharpest lens, but it is um, a good lens to start off with, especially like with a T3i. It gives you that focal range for a pretty cheap price. So we talked about the modern lenses I have, but what about some of my vintage lenses? But first, before we move into that, I do have this 25mm CCTV lens. And what's great about this lens, besides its price of $25, it's a 1.4 lens. So that's in a huge amount of light, more than all my other lenses, because I accidentally broke it, so I can't really use it much anymore. But, you know, if you take care of it and, you know, you don't mess with the insides of the lens, which I did, <laughs> um, it's a relatively good lens and I think it really benefits as a macro lens because it lets in so much light and it gives you these extension tubes on the lens. You can get really close to your subject. I did a video about this lens, which you can check out right here. It's pretty good value for money, although don't go messing with the insides. Now we're moving on to the vintage lenses. I'm going to start with the wide angle lenses and move into the telephoto lenses. The first one I have is the Sears 28mm f2.8. I don't really recommend this lens at all, but if you have some other 28mm lenses around, you might want to give it a shot. I'm pretty sure this is just a low quality lens. But th some things I do like about it, you know, as this really smooth focus ring. It's solidly built, it's just not very sharp. My next lens, which I just had purchased, is the Nikon 35mm to 70mm f3.3 to 4.5. Now, it's kind of like a kit lens version of, on a vintage lens. Um, I never had a zoom wide angle lens, so I want to give this a try. And considering it lets in more light than my kit lens, I could just probably, you know, if I need a 35mm, at least I can get a wider aperture. The great thing about vintage lenses, you know, you can control the iris and the focus, so you're not missing out on any um, aperture control like with my 17 to 55. Optically, it's not the greatest lens, it's still sharp, you know, it's just not gonna be as sharp as a modern lens and it has some flaring issues. 
but overall I do kind of enjoy shooting with this lens. One problem with it is that the focus kind of extends and that can be a problem when you have filters on. It kind of messes with the ND and the focusing and kind of gets everywhere but it's a pretty nice lens and I got this for $30. This is my favorite vintage prime. It's the 50 millimeter Yashica Yashinon, and it's an f1.7. So it's kind of like a Canon 50 millimeter f1.8, only get way better build quality. And I find that the images from the vintage lenses actually look a lot more filmic than some of the modern lenses. I also made a video on this lens, which you can check out for more information. I really enjoy just the look from this lens and also the price tag, which is $8 with a tripod. I have another 50 millimeter lens. This one's by Sears as well. Again, it's a 1.7 aperture lens. This came with the 28 millimeter Sears lens and the next lens I'm about to show, but I got that with a film camera for $25. One thing that's different with this lens is the size. It's almost like a pancake lens. It's about half the size of this lens here. A while back I did a comparison with the Sears, Canon, and Yashica lens, which you can check out right here. Moving on to the last of the bunch is the Sears 80-200 constant aperture of f4. Again I find that these vintage lenses are not as sharp. The 55-250 is probably sharper, although this does give you an f4 constant so you can actually zoom in and still retain the same amount of light. Combined with a 2 times extender and on a micro four thirds camera, this is an equivalent of an 800 millimeter lens. Again, like all the other vintage lenses, it has an aperture ring and a smooth focus ring here. It's a push-pull zooming lens, so you can actually just move in and out like that, and that will zoom it from 80 to 200. I also have a Soligor 200 millimeter lens which is actually put away and I don't have it right now. I never really mess around with that lens too much anyway. Again, that's probably because it's a telephoto lens and I'm usually using a wide angle lens. Other lenses that I had is the Canon 24mm f2.8, the Canon 50mm f1.8, the Canon 18 to 135, and of course the Canon 18 to 55mm lens. But since I moved from a Canon to a Panasonic G7, I've sold a lot of the Canon lenses, except for, you know, those two lenses. I don't really plan on selling the 17-55, as I could use those with um, higher-end cinema cameras if I want to, or if I had a cinema camera. So that's the end of the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll answer them. And you can watch some more of my videos right here. See you later.